And good afternoon, and we're coming to you from West Los Angeles College. My name is Scott Kecken. I am the Academic Media Production Consultant here. And today we're going to be talking about the Art of PowerPoint, which is a workshop I give uh, about once or twice a semester here at West Los Angeles. And let's get started. The Art of PowerPoint. So when I say PowerPoint, what is the first thing that pops into your mind? For me, it's usually boring or, God, not another PowerPoint. And we associate all these negative feelings with PowerPoint. From now on, I wanted you to start thinking, at least for the slideshow, that PowerPoint could be fun, it can be creative, it can be something that can really enhance your classes. So I'm going to start with some initial design principles to talk about. First one is to remember that the focus is you and not the PowerPoint. People are here to hear what you have to say because you're the expert here and the PowerPoint should be supporting you. So first rule is you want your audience to focus more on you speaking than the PowerPoint itself. Okay, so here's a question for you. What does this mean? Um, you probably know if you look at it, just uh, less is more. The less you have, the more that people are going to be focused on you. You're supporting the information on the screen, not the other way around. Another principle that um, you should think of is consistency. So your entire slide presentation is consistent in design. Um, and I designed this PowerPoint to be that way. So you'll notice it has a um, completely white background. And I'm going to use a lot of graphics and a very similar types of fonts. I think I used two different fonts in this PowerPoint. So when you make your PowerPoints, make them consistent. Don't vary in style or design throughout the PowerPoint. Just keep it to one design. Emulate. If you see a design, if you see something out and about, an advertisement, a print advertisement, or a bus advertisement that you like, emulate that in your PowerPoint. Look at what is the aesthetic here that I'm, I'm liking. The large graphic, the color scheme, the fonts, what the way they're able to communicate their, their message. Simplicity. Again, less is more. Keep things simple. Keep them functional. Keep them in such a way that your audience isn't overtaxed by all the information that's on your PowerPoint focus here is like what when you make your PowerPoints each slide should have a focus and it should be easy for your audience to, to determine visually what that focus is and you're giving the backup information the supporting information the main points to that slide balance is a another design concept this one is obviously balanced a lot to the left and but it has a lot of white space in the upper right hand corner um, so you have to keep that in mind too, is how do you balance your objects and your texts and your images and your graphs together? And speaking of white space, okay, so white space is a term used in graphic design that gives your design some, some breadth, some freedom to move around. And the white space here is illustrated by the ex to the extreme where the only design on the slide is the words uh, white space. The use of color in PowerPoint is an important design feature as well. How do we use color and a color scheme to best enhance your PowerPoint slides? This slide is overwhelming. It's an extreme example of the use of color. It's so bright. There's so many different colors here that it's hard to focus on any one given flag. This is um, your basic color wheel um, and we have on the left blue and purple magenta down to green yellow and around to orange and red complementary colors would be colors that are opposite for example on this color wheel that is demonstrated by uh, blue and orange um, or purple and yellow um, this uh, is a good way to think of a color scheme. It's like, what complementary colors can I use in my PowerPoint slide? Let's say my background is blue, um, then maybe I can make my 
uh, text in orange or vice versa. Uh, you really have to take a look to see how how it looks and how appealing it is. And there are some combinations that work really well together. And the same is with analogous colors, um, which are colors that are similar to each other, that are next to each other, like uh, dark blue and light blue, or um, let's say red and orange, or yellow and uh, light green. Uh, whatever words and whatever type you have up there, you want to be able to make sure that people can see it clearly. Another um, concept is depth. Um, and depth is something that we take for granted because we see in depth. But um, PowerPoint and any kind of uh, medium like PowerPoint or drawing or, or uh, even uh, movies are two-dimensional. Um, it's only by the illusion of depth that we, we see it. So you can employ this in your PowerPoint to, to give it some um, three dimensions to pop things out. And this, this slide illustrates um, the three basic planes and where to do that. You have your foreground here with this large cowboy, and then your midground is with the cactus, and the background is the other cowboy and the scenic landscape. Here is an example on how to use depth in the slide with only text. So on this slide we have um, a large scale version of depth um, in the foreground down to the left and a um, smaller scale size example of the word depth in the background and you can see just by placement and size how we create the illusion of depth in this slide. Uh, this is uh, an illusion of depth using shape and color and again, we have some complementary colors with each other, but um, and then just also duplicating that shape and positioning it and um, changing the size also gives us the illusion of depth between the three different shapes. This is a really nice example of uh, using color and using simplicity and using illustration to demonstrate, to get information out. This is actually an illustration of how to do a certain type of fishing tie. And it really shows and uh, very simple using um, orange or like a brown and a blue two um, complementary colors against each other and how to do this in a four-step process. Here's one for graphs because um, a lot of times we like data and we like to use graphs. And this graph is using an analogous color scheme from purple to light blue. I grabbed this from a favorite designer's website there was no title to the graph, but I imagined that it must say something like uh, Supernatural Beings Encounters with Human Beings over a year period, maybe. Um, and we can see by the use of purple and that standing out that trolls have had the most encounters with human beings. Here it is in a bar graph form with encounters with humans between elves, gremlins, and trolls over a four-month period. And this is a, a use of a complementary color scheme and an analogous color scheme. So we have the light blue and the darker blue um, contrasted with the orange. And if you notice, I also highlighted and made bold the number, the largest encounters in April. There were five encounters between humans and trolls. And this wanted to be, this was information I highlighted so that when the audience looked, they would see that almost immediately. Here is one for um, our anatomy teachers and biology teachers as a simple way to take um, a graphic that you have to use in a class. In this case, a medical illustration of a spine and a vertebrae. And singling out one of the vertebrae and bringing attention to it through use of color. Here is a more specific way of doing the same thing. And here we've highlighted just one part of the spinal cord. A story should have a beginning, a middle, and an end, but not necessarily in that order. And that is from one of my favorite filmmakers, Jean-Luc Godard. This is important because your PowerPoint should also be a story. And it should have a beginning, and middle, and end, but it doesn't have to be you know, starting off at the beginning. I base my structure on screenplays since I'm also a film director. And I look at screen, screenplay structure and basic story structure in the way that I set up some of my PowerPoints. Conflict drives the story forward. 
And a lot of times, especially if you're teaching a humanities class um, or anthropology class, a social science class, you have this built into your lesson. It's, it's something to remember as a way to make your PowerPoints uh, move and connect with your students. Here is a graph of that basic um, story structure with going vertical. If you had this going vertical, that would be the intensity of conflict, the intensity of your story. And going horizontal would be our time does it take place in, beginning, middle, or end. Usually um, at the beginning of any story, you pretty much get characters or location or time. If that's important to your story, that's usually what you start out with. Then we have um, a point where the story takes a turn. And this happens in you know, any of the movies that you go to see. Check for this next time you are watching this. So we call this in script writing um, the inciting incident. And a, a good example of that would having an explosion. Um, a lot of action movies or a lot of movies nowadays, especially Hollywood movies uh, in that genre, uh, thriller, action, suspense, start off with a bang. And this is something that will force your your story to move forward. Now this next slide, I want to give an apology out for any vegetarians out there, but I think it illustrates my point pretty quickly. The next part of your story is going to be the meat this is the meat of your PowerPoint. This is where all your data goes. This is where you want to chock full of information, whatever you, information you want to get out. A good PowerPoint will leave your students or audience with a solid, you know, two to three strong points that you can illustrate. So you can hammer that out right here. This is where I would say 60% of your, your time is going to be spent. Now, the last part, and I use this from another favorite movie, um, which I believe to be a classic example of script structure, and that is from a movie called The Matrix, and you might recognize our uh, hero, Neo, aka Keanu Reeves here. Um, last part of the graph represents uh, the third act of your PowerPoint, or the third act in a script. And this is where your characters, or where your story, where your PowerPoint should climax, it should come to a conclusion where um, the problem is resolved, your historical figure triumphs or is defeated. However way it plays out in your story, this is where it needs to come at some point. This should be the most intense part of your PowerPoint and the most engaging. So that at the beginning of your slideshow, and this is an analogy for um, the world we started out with is now the world that is different. So we have a before world and an after world. Your story should be should show the world or whatever corner of your world in a different perspective to your audience so that they can see a distinct change in theme or story from where you started to where you ended. And now we're going to talk about the process, how to put it all together. Pre-production, this is probably the most important part of the process and that's just planning out, planning out everything, writing down like in this example, um, sketching out some thumbnails of your basic design, uh, maybe ideas of images, your structure, what's the wording going to be on each slide or at least some of the ideas for that wording and, and, and sketch that out from start to finish so you have an idea of where things are and what your design is going to be. We move into production and the way I talk about production is that you think of it as um, trying to get this PowerPoint done in one session, two tops, two sessions tops, but you want to get the bulk of your PowerPoint done in one session. So that means that um, you have to have all your images together, uh, downloaded or ripped from your uh, camera. Um, if you're using video, any kind of materials that you need, and, you, know, you need to have them gathered and ready for when you enter into production because you're going to try and do it all at once. Um, and sometimes this might take definitely a couple hours to maybe several hours um, to get it done, to get it close to completion. So I have here a cup of coffee with our film slate so that you can pour yourself a, a cup or two to get things going. And then finally, you have a presentation. So 
Your presentation is your delivery, your distribution of your information to an audience. So it's a good idea to try and at least go through your presentation a few times in order to familiarize yourself with, with your presentation. And uh, if you have a chance to practice, that's even better. Okay, let's take a look at a couple designs that I like, and these can be found on uh, slideshare.net, and you can find a lot of these designs there. Okay, thirst, and I think we know just from the first slide what this one is all about. And you can look up in the upper left, that's the address for this uh, slideshow. You can take a look for it as well at slideshare.net. Great stuff here, good use of design simple, consistent. Um, we have a nice use of graphics, nice use of color, consistent font. Very clear what the focus is here. Very nice slideshow. Let's take a look at the, uh, the other one as well. Okay, this is um, simpler. It's strictly type. Um, but it's something that is well done in the way that the fonts were chosen and the color scheme used here, as well as the size and prominence of the fonts. Questions, and if you have any questions about this PowerPoint or the art of PowerPoint, feel free to email me at kekinsa at wlac.edu. That's K-E-C-K-E-N-S-A at wlac.edu. See you later.